Writing a scientific explanation, a CER, is an important science skill that students need to be able to do. They have to be able to state their claim, state their answer to the question, but then also support it with evidence and give reasoning to why they're using that evidence. And that can be kind of difficult for students. So what I have found is the first time we do a CER, I want to hook those students in and help them break down the different parts of a CER using something they're interested in. And that's CSI. So to help my students understand how to write a CER, the first time I introduce it, I play on my students' love and interest of CSI investigations and solving a case. So I created a sort of a clue solve the case CSI investigation style where my students have to figure out what happened to Sir Edward Berkshire III. And what they're going to be doing is they're going to be filling out, of course, their journal, the detective journal, where they're going to write down different observations that will then become evidence for their claim of what happens to Sir Edward Berkshire. So they're writing down observation notes of the, of the actual scene. They're writing down the police information. They're going to be writing down all the forensics analysis and writing down the key important details of them. Then they actually have to do some research, get some common knowledge. What do you already know? You're going to be explaining the evidence they're collecting. So this will then become their reasoning area. What do we already know about some of the certain topics? And then they get to write their claim, what actually happened to Sir Edward Berkshire III. The evidence, which is coming just from the actual observations, the police report, the forensic evidence, and then their reasoning, their explanation of using that evidence, what they already know about that topic, what they already know about different parts and information from the crime scene. And then they put it all together here. So they go through here. I put this on the board for them and get them started. They look at the crime scene. They get a setup of who Sir Edward Brookshire is, what happened, how he was found. Then they're going to do some observations looking very clearly at the crime scene for specific details that they want to see. So I have a lot of students that say, okay, there's, um, there's a knife on the floor or what looks like a knife. There's blood by the head. There's a window or a mirror with shards taken out of it. It looks like there's wine, there's steak, there's an empty plate. There's some type of pills on the table here. And they're coming through and then they look at the police report and that's when they get a little bit more information so they find out the um, bottle of red wine is there there's a partially eaten steak that the prescription bottle is a prescription of acetabutol so they have to now research what is acetabutol what is that prescription used for right it talks about where the body is where the blood is and then they get to interview the different people involved the servant and the brother and then they're going to come through and they're going to look at more forensic evidence. We look at the chemical analysis, fingerprints, DNA, blood analysis, the autopsy report. So they come through here and they're going to be looking at what is detected, what is not detected, uh, the DNA analysis, what it matches. And notice one says bovine. Well, my students might not know what bovine is. So again, they're going to have to research that information. So it turns out, you know, bovine is cow's blood and the prescription drug is for high blood pressure and for people who have heart conditions. So they can put it all together to figure out what actually happens. And by the end, they should discover that no one actually killed Sir Edward Berkshire III. Instead, he had a heart attack. And as he had a heart attack, he hit his head against the mirror, which caused lots of, you know, cuts on the head. And um, they can research, you know, how, you know, you know, injuries to the head, how much you bleed. And they can discover that, you know, head injuries bleed a lot more because of all the capillaries in the head. 
that are doing that. And so he actually, you know, has the heart attack and bleeds out and bleeds to death and all that, that no one actually kills him. Um, when I do have some students that say it is the brother or say it is the chef or something else, that's when I have the other groups debate them and we go into a head to head, sort of like a court case. Can you prove without a reasonable doubt what actually happened? Or is there a reason to Could the fingerprints, for example, the fingerprints are found on there. Um, when they get into the fingerprints analysis, you will notice that the butler's on the fingerprints, right? The chef is on the knife. And then we talk about reasonable doubt. Well, if the butler is serving the food, it makes sense that his fingerprints would be on the wine glass. It would be on the medicine bottle. It would be on, you know, the, the chef, if he's putting the knife on the plate after he prepared the dinner, that it would make sense that the chef's fingerprints would be on the knife. So any reasonable doubt, then it gets thrown out in the court case that we do at the end when we're having our debate and our discussion. So this is just a fun way it gets students to understand the difference between evidence, which has to come directly from the actual results of the different analyses that are happening, the actual observations that are occurring, and the difference between that and the reasoning about what they know, what they know about this prescription drug, what they know about what bovine is and why that would make sense that that's the blood on the floor and not human blood, or the blood on the knife, I should say, and not human blood. So they get to go into that and it's a quick, easy way to do a introduction to CER. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.